Yes, this could actually spell disaster for the C8 Corvette. I know this sounds like clickbait, but in fact, it is actually true. So please stick around for the entire video. This could completely change the C8 as we know it. But first, we need to get into some Z06 news. There's some very interesting stuff that's just been released. My name is Eric, and please go ahead and slap a like on today's video if you want to keep up with automotive news and also reviews. Today, we're sponsored by TubeBuddy. It's an app that I use to look for keywords when I'm making videos. If you're a video maker, there is a link in the description to get a free trial. This is from the mid-engine Corvette forum. So we might have a reveal date for the Z06. And this is from a forum member, Marcus Viega. Apparently he is uh, at Estero by Chevrolet, number 16 in the country. He says there's gonna be some amazing news about the Z06 on in July be very, very cool if it was on the 18th. That would be exactly a year after the C8 reveal that was in Tustin. That was actually a super cool event. So not much more information on this. This is not really verified. It is coming from a dealer. And in my opinion, dealers are not generally the best sources of information. They tend to be refuted sometimes, but we'll have to see. Um, that would be really interesting if General Motors decides to drop some information about the Z06 in July. Not too far away now, so keep your fingers crossed. Now the next story is also concerning the C8 Corvette. There is gonna be a shutdown at the plant, apparently starting February 1st. This is something that is actually affecting the industry as a whole. Car manufacturers are shutting down their plants because there is a chip shortage happening right now and a lot of manufacturers are not able to get the chips that they need to put into their cars. So this is affecting Ford as far as I know and it's affecting a number of manufacturers. And so apparently the Bowling Green plant is gonna shut down for a week. This was also on mid-engine Corvette form and apparently it is confirmed. The really big news is that Motor Trend just released a video on an article about the Z06 testing at Willow Springs International Raceway. That is north of Los Angeles. I've been there quite a number of times. And so they had a spy photographer who was up on a hill uh, above the track and was able to capture some footage of a car that obviously is the Z06. Looks like Chevy rented the facility for a day to do some private testing. So one of the big rumors, of course, about the, the Z06 is the engine. And the rumor is that it is not gonna be a traditional uh, cross-plane crank. It's not gonna be sort of the old school LS base, the overhead valve setup that we have right now, which is not a bad setup, but this is going to be a flat plane crank engine. So a flat plane crank V8 has a very distinctive, very unique sound. And that's actually because of the configuration of the engine and the crank. In fact, I've got an entire video that I did on it. It's pretty detailed. I'm gonna link it uh, here. You can go check that out. I basically go into why the flat plane crank engine sounds so amazing and sounds so unique. I talk quite a bit about the Z06 and the engine there. And I also talk about the Voodoo engine in the Ford Mustang GT350. So this engine to me sounds a lot like the Ferrari 458, which also has a flat plane crank engine. It is 4.5 liters. And this dates back to 2015. They were already making 597 horsepower, which is really a lot. So listen to this engine sound from the Ferrari for a second. <laughs> Now, GM has been really, really good at keeping their information secret about the C8 Corvette. If you remember, leading up to the reveal last July, we only got a significant number of pretty credible rumors right before the reveal. Before that, they were driving around the car in camo. There was a lot of speculation about what the hardware would be underneath. And of course, everybody's memory is short and everybody thinks that they know what was gonna be in there. But actually leading up to it in the, in the year, leading up to it, the months leading up to it, there really wasn't that in much information. And so GM has done a very, very good job again of keeping their information secret. Um, I have it on pretty good authority that General Motors 
has this project really locked down in terms of their security and how they deal with the vendors going in and out of the building. There's really no cameras allowed, cell phones, all that kind of stuff. So they really have a very high tight handle on security, unlike some other companies that have had a lot of leaks over the last year. Bronco. However, the best information that we have apparently does come from some inside sources. They're not my sources, by the way. Uh, the engine is supposedly going to make 600 to 650 horsepower. Now, some people say that's not really all that possible with an engine that large. And if you look at my video, I talk about why the larger flat plane crank engines seem to have problems. There's a lot of vibrational issues. And in fact, Ford doesn't make the GT 350 engine anymore, the Voodoo engine, uh, allegedly because of some of the vibrational issues, but that's open to speculation. But remember, Ferrari six years ago was making about 600 horsepower out of 4.5 liters, so it's definitely possible. And I have a pretty good feeling that Chevy is going to find a way. So what about price? So the 2019 Z06, the MSRP started at about $83,000. Now that number is probably going to go up a little bit or maybe quite a bit because we are dealing with the C8 and the C8 starts quite a bit higher than the, the C7 did. Most average builds are, you know, getting up to around $70,000. Whole new generation, my guess is we're going to go significantly above the $83,000 mark. I'm guessing it's going to be closer to 90, maybe 92, something like that. The Motor Trend spy photographer caught this image of the car fueling up near the track. And there's a couple of very interesting things going on here. Uh, first off are the wheels. The wheels are covered up. This is pretty unusual. So this tells me that these are special wheels. They are gonna be unique to the Z06. The rumor is, and I think this is very likely, that they are going to be some type of carbon fiber wheel. And in fact, on the Mustang GT500, you can get carbon fiber wheels. They're quite expensive. So I think that's what we're seeing here. I expect them to be wider than the standard wheels that are on the C8. Uh, we'll get into that in just a second. And the next thing that I see when I'm looking up close here is the front of the car. We sort of look at the arrow and we can see that there is probably a front splitter. You can see coming down from the in front of the wheel, you can see this piece coming down here going into what I think is a splitter. And it's actually pretty clear because if you look at the front of the car, you look right up at the front, you can kind of see this edge here too. So I think that is going to be much more aggressive than what we get on the standard car. A uh, front splitter basically keeps the air from going underneath the car and tries to keep the airflow um, going around the car. So it uh, basically you get less lift is the whole idea behind that. Uh, we've also got some some other stuff going on here too in terms of probably in terms of cooling below the headlights a little bit difficult to say what's going on there but we have a pretty big opening and then we've got this very prominent piece on top of the frunk so i think it's i mean we can speculate as to what this is it's going to be pretty difficult at the end of the day to say what it is perhaps it's some type of air intake i think that is entirely possible uh, it's also possible that this is just a red herring as well. We really don't know. It is a pretty prominent piece. And again, it's difficult to say exactly why we have it there. Going around to the back of the car, we can see these tires. These are very, very big tires. These are probably 325 section tires. Uh, probably, possibly Pilot Sport Cup 2, something like that. They need to be able to put down the additional power that the Z06 has over the standard model. And there's also been talk about the Z06 getting some sort of active aerodynamics. Now in this particular car, I don't really see it here. You can see what does appear to be um, a, a little wing or winglets above the, the taillights. Uh, it's not a particularly big wing, so if this particular car has active aero, you probably can't see it. Um, that doesn't seem to be what they're testing. We don't really know what they were testing that day, but my guess is they probably were not testing aerodynamics because we've got a pretty heavily camoed up vehicle here. So just back to the engine for a quick second, a flat plane crank engine can rev really, really high. In the Mustang GT350, it revs out to 8250. 
there is, we don't exactly know what it's gonna do here, but the rumor is that it could go up between eight and 9,000 RPM. I think we're certainly gonna see above 8,250 because GM is just gonna have to show up Ford and we could be getting up to the Ferrari levels up to close to 9,000 RPM. So depending on the rumor, we're gonna have to wait and see, but this would be a very big, if not the biggest, flat plane crank engine in existence if it is 5.5 liters. The Mustang, again, it's 5.2. And all of this is leading up to the thing that could spell disaster for the C8 and in fact, a lot of other vehicles. General Motors is saying that they are going to go EV basically by 2035. Uh, they pledged to be carbon neutral by 2040. So let's dig into that a little bit more and just look at the specific language here to see what they're talking about. Today, GM announced that it plans to become carbon neutral in its global products and operations by 2040. So that actually involves a lot of different things, but specifically, here's what I think is of interest to enthusiasts, car folks like us. In addition to GM's carbon goals, the company worked with the Environmental Defense Fund, Defense Fund to develop a shared vision of an all electric future and an aspiration to eliminate tailpipe emissions from new light duty vehicles by 2035. So they're not setting this as a hard date. They're saying this is their aspiration. GM's focus will be offering zero emission vehicles across a wide range of price points and working with all stakeholders, including the EDF, the Environmental Defense Fund. But one of the reasons that makes this likely that GM is gonna firm up around this date is China. So China has a lot of subsidies for their own internal car manufacturing industry. As you may or may not know, General Motors actually sells a lot of cars in China. China is now the world's largest auto market. It is bigger than the US and Japan combined. So China holds a lot of sway in terms of global companies selling their cars into China. And so that is naturally gonna push manufacturers to start developing a lot more electrics to meet China's deadline. Because if you wanna sell in China, you need to be fully EV by 2035. So we're talking about just 14 years away now, if I'm doing my math right. Maybe 15 if you discount the one month that we've just been through in 2021. Please let me know down in the comments what you think of this decision to go fully electric by 2035. General Motors is not the only one. There's a lot of other manufacturers doing this. My name is Eric. I will see you very soon with another review and also the news. Take care.